We're going to get started again with the uh, resolution, uh, with the ordinances for introduction. Uh, Mr. Mills, uh, 719. Mayor, I'm going to ask you to uh, add, please uh, call for a motion to carry that to April 17th. I understand from Mr. Slate that we're not quite ready to go forward on that. So the motion is to just table it to the meeting of April 17th. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Mr. Mills, 0819? Yes. Uh, this is a cap entitled uh, Ordinance uh, Modifying and Amending Chapter 9, Sections 39-46, entitled Economic Development Advisory Committee. Uh, if this ordinance and the remaining ordinances also for introduction will be further heard for second reading, public hearing on April 17th at 7 o'clock. So you need to call for a motion to introduce. I'll offer it. Thank you. Second. Very good. Roll call. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Wilson. Yes. Yes. And and just just sorry, just to be clear, I should have stated this before after we read the introduction. Um, so this is just updating some of the rules related to the economic development uh, committee that we have that the Deputy Mayor Wilson's been working very hard at. Um, to how would you explain it? Well. Um, to move the work along. Mm -hmm. So, I can, do you want me to comment a little bit on the, on the revision? Sure, go ahead. Um, we've had several new members um, come to join the Economic Development Advisory Committee this year, and uh, some of them needed to get conflict of interest letters from their business. So, in the process of getting that paperwork accomplished, it required looking at the ordinance and as a part of the ordinance review, some questions came up. So the purpose of the revisions is basically to clarify the fact that um, EDAC's purpose is to make general recommendations about general business practices. Its, its purpose is not to make any particular rec recommendations about specific sites or businesses. So that's really the main um, theme that's um, that's been put into these revisions to clarify that difference. Very good. So we're looking forward to hearing some good things coming out of EDAC through the year. Yes. Thank you. I'm optimistic. Very good. Okay, Mr. Mills, 0918, please. Ordinance <laughs> amending Chapter 88, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Section 88.27, Schedule 6, no parking on snow covered roadway, Lindsley Drive, both sides for the entire length. Somebody moved to introduce that? Okay. So. Second. So now that it's been introduced, I actually have a question for Mr. Fenn. <coughs> so there are people who park on Lindsley Drive on a regular basis, right? Are they the apartment dwellers? Yes, sir. And when it does snow, where do they have other alternative means for parking? Yes, sir. The, this originally originated with the um, managers of the Lindsley Drive apartments with the snow issues that we have there with people parking there and then us not being able to clear the road. They have adequate parking behind the buildings for all of the house, all of the vehicles. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ms. Amelia, roll call. Mr. Arminides? Yes. Mr. Dorothy? Yes. Mr. Thank you, sir. Yes. Mrs. Wilson? Yes. Mayor Gazelle? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mills, 1019. The ordinance appropriating $25,000 available in the general capital fund to provide for the replacement of the HVAC system at the Mount Kemble Fire Station uh, here and by the Township Mars to replace the air conditioning system of the sleeping units in the NHVAC. Very good. Somebody introduce that, please. Oh. We have a second? Okay, and just for clarification, Mr. Clint, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is an emergency repair to the HVAC system at this firehouse, and because it is an appropriation of money on a special basis, we are creating an ordinance for it? Yes, sir, it's coming out of our general capital fund, um, which has a like, like fund balance, mm -hmm. so it's coming directly from there. It's not a budgetary yet. Very good, thank you. And Mr. Jorf, you're going to refuse yourself on this one? Yeah, I'll say. Okay, very good. Roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. John? Yes. 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 Yes.
Somebody introduce that, please. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Quinn, can you just explain a little bit more? Because I always thought that the wording of this was a, a little bit strange, that we're exceeding the budget appropriation, but we're not really exceeding the budget no, appropriation. Basically, if we did, um, it puts it into a paper bank. Um, it's what we could have spent that we're not, we're going to reserve that for future years. If for some reason in future years we need additional money above the 2% tax levy, we have a bank that we can draw down on, but it's really not a bank in itself. The money is not there, and you still have to raise the money through um, a tax appropriation. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Jarkey. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. John, 1219. Yes. Morgan to the Township of Morris County, Morris, New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 95 of Title Zoning, uh, repealing and replacing Article 12 titled Small Cell Equipment, Wireless Cabinets, and Wireless Poles in the municipal right away with a new Article 12 entitled Reserve and Revising Section 89A, Roman 9 of Article 8, entitled Co-location onto Existing Towers and Base Stations. And the note says that the purpose of this is to update the ordinance and be consistent with recent FCC ruling. I will offer the ordinance, Mr. Mayor. I have a second? Second. So just for clarification again, this, this ordinance and 13 has to do with the upcoming 5G installations that we're going to be seeing from the cell carriers and I, I expect from, from new people that are going to come into this business. Um, there was an ordinance that passed last year, but the FCC made a recent ruling uh, regarding time limits and other uh, small details about the enforcement of uh, the ordinances and the, and the timeliness of, of acting on those. And those are the changes that are being made tonight. Uh, so that's the purpose of both 12 and 13. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Arvanides? Yes. Mr. Jordan? Yes. Mr. McKinney? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Uh, I'm going to abstain uh, on the basis of the timing of when the ordinance came out. My preference would be for it to be shared more than one day ahead of time. Very good. Yes. Oh, sorry, Mayor Grisell. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And John, 13-19? Yes. Uh, an ordinance of the Township of Morris, Morris County, New Jersey, as you indicated, companion to the prior one, uh, amending and supplementing the revised ordinance of the Township of Morris by adding a new article, uh, 6, entitled Siting of Poles, Cabinets, and Antennas, which is to be part of Chapter 439, entitled Streets and Sidewalks. Again, as you indicated, Mayor, uh, for consistency with the new FCC ruling. Right. And I just I should have added before that one of the things that we've done, and I think it's with 13 if I'm correct, uh, that we're requiring as much co-location of these 5G uh, installations as possible. As I said, I expect it's going to be more than Verizon and T-Mobile and Sprint. I think there are going to be some new vendors that are going to be coming into the market with 5G and we want to co-locate as many of those things on a single tower as possible. So that's another thing that we added into this ordinance. Okay. No. Roll call? Mr. Yes. 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 Okay, now we have ordinances, uh, public hearing, and final consideration. And the first one on the list is 01 19, but we are not considering that tonight because we have, at the last meeting, uh, if you were here, we postponed uh, further action on that until the May 15th meeting. So there's going to be no action on that tonight, although we will be having the presentation shortly. Right. So, uh, Mr. Mills, 05-19. It is entitled an ordinance vacating the rights of the Township of Morris and in 2.036 acres of unimproved right-of-way, which was formerly a portion of Oak Park Drive and formerly a cul-de-sac. And I would ask uh, Mayor Lee Wilkins for public hearing. Do we have oil? So we don't need to we've been introduced, we can just open up for public hearing. You can do it that way. You, you might be even more technically correct to call for a motion to adopt and a second and then have the public hearing if you wish. That's okay. We'll have the public hearing. we make that motion. I will second that motion. Very good. So then we will open up the public portion and let me say that... Uh, Not yet. No, that's the adoption language. No, this is the time limit language. Should I read the oh, time limit language? Should I read the time limit language? No, the time limit language is fine. For comment on that. I could do that as well. Uh, okay. So we have a speaker's time limitation uh, for anybody who comes up to the podium for this or any other matter. 
Um, but I'd like to announce that in order to give interested parties a fair chance to be heard, each speaker could comment for an unassignable period of five minutes before turning the microphone over to the next speaker, and that after each has had the t one turn, a person may be heard for an additional unassignable period of five minutes. So we're opening up this ordinance to public hearing, if anybody would like to comment on it. Move and seeing them, we'll move the public. Very good, second. Very good. We'll close the public portion. And, and roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I, Jeffrey Argery Zell, Mayor, declare the ordinance adopted and finally passed, approved the same, and direct the clerk to publish proper notice thereof in the newspaper and to record the ordinance in the proper place. Uh, Mr. Mills? Yes. 0619? Also, the public hearing ordinance of the Township of Morris, Morris County, Missouri, to establish our salaries and compensation for employees of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, local 469 of the Township, and this is uh, continuity note salaries for DPW parks and sewer utility employees. And this is basically adopting a union contract that is consistent with the 2% increases that the other unions have received in Morris Township. Will somebody move that forward? Final consideration. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Roll call? No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Open to the public. Anybody have any comment on 0619? We'll close the public portion. Then we'll close the public portion. I have a second. Aye. Roll call, please. Ms. Arbonetti? Yes. Mr. Yes. Ms. Rekuso? Yes. Ms. Yes. Yes. I, Jeffrey Grazell, Mayor, declare the ordinance adopted and finally passed, approved the same, and direct that the clerk establish uh, publish proper notice thereof in the newspaper and to record the ordinance in the proper place. Uh, next on the agenda is the introduction of the 2000 municipal budget. Uh, this is just the introduction. Next month we're going to have a full-blown presentation, uh, but after we introduce it tonight, I believe tomorrow you will see on our website the documents that will be available for public review uh, so that everybody will have uh, four weeks time before the next meeting to review them and be prepared to ask questions at our budget presentation. Is that correct, Mr. Quinn? That is correct, sir. Very good. Uh, so will somebody move the... No, no, but no. You've got to turn it over to me. Ah. i got to do that. Okay. Very good. I'll turn it over, Mr. Quinn. Mayor Grissel, I'm uh, pleased to present the 2019 municipal budget. Uh, the general budget being $36,649,606. The sewer utility budget in the amount of $9,287,000. The swim pool utility budget in the, in the amount of... $1,112,500, and the parking utility budget in the amount of $355,000. I put forth to the Township Committee, and then I will ask Mrs. Emilio for uh, a roll call on this um, regards to the 2019 municipal budget. Be resolved that the following statements of revenues and appropriations shall constitute the municipal budget for the year 2019. Be further resolved that said budget be published in the next available edition of the Morris County Daily Record. The governing body of the Township of Morris does hereby approve the following as the budget for the year 2019. Notice is hereby given that the public hearing and final consideration on the 2019 budget and tax resolution by the Mayor and Township Committee will be held on April 17, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Morris Township Municipal Building, 50 Woodland Avenue, at which time and place objections to said budget and tax resolution for the year 2019 may be presented by taxpayers or other interested persons. Uh, with that, I would uh, ask Mrs. Emilio to do a roll call for the introduction of the budget. So, the before, motion first. I'm sorry. Yeah, and before, before we take a motion, well, should we take a motion before making any comments? I think that'd be appropriate. Motion, a second, then comment. Okay, we'll take a motion and a second, then we'll take comments. Motion. Second. Very good. Uh, I just want to make a general comment that uh, Mr. Quinn and our, our CFO, Francine DeAngelis, worked very, very hard on putting this budget together. Uh, the Finance Committee, which is myself and Mr. Mancuso, are very pleased that we've come in with a flat budget. That means no tax increase. We're keeping the tax rate flat. Um, even though expenses are going up, we're able to keep the budget flat, and we're very pleased with that. You'll get more details on how we were able to do that next month, um, but it's a great thing that, that we were able to do that. And I'd like to offer it up to anybody else who would like to make some comments. Why don't you have a vote, and then... Mr. Arvanides? Thank you, Mayor. 
Um, the whole committee did work very diligently, and I commend uh, Mr. Quinn and his staff for the effort and the hard work that they put into creating a budget that came in with no increase. Um, I had already mentioned to the rest of the committee that I won't be voting yes on the introduction to this budget. My reason for it is because even though it's coming in with no increase, it still is a tax increase. And the reason for that is because of the amount that our surplus still increases next year. So my vision for good government is when we can lower taxes, we should lower taxes. And I've proposed a two-point decrease, which would save approximately $200 per household. Um, and it's easily done. It does not affect our future. Uh, we have future revenues that will be coming in. And it's easily done by just making a few tweaks and adjustments to the budget. And therefore, because of the fact that I feel this is an increase in tax, even though it's coming in at a zero, I will not be able to support such a budget because we can lower our taxes this year. Okay. Yes, Mr. Mendoza? Uh, having, having participated in making 18 budgets, uh, I've gone through this uh, with a fine tooth comb. We've spent untold hours, the two of us, uh, Jeff and myself, plus the uh, uh, plus uh, Fran and Tim, and our auditors. And frankly, it at the beginning of the the negotiations, it did seem like the auditors especially asked for a tax increase because they felt that if we put a little more money into the uh, uh, into the Congress every year, that problems like we had back in 2010 and 2011 could not occur. I'm fully in accordance with keeping this budget flat, and uh, I hope that you will understand it and we'll discuss it much more next month. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Arbenz? If I may add, um, as far as looking into the future, the, the pilot program that's coming, uh, the, the revenue that we will be receiving from that will be more than enough to continue uh, with the services that we're used to and uh, keeping our taxes down, if not lower. Um, as far as the auditors are concerned, being a, a CPA um, and the person in Cuso was right that uh, they did mention that uh, it would be appropriate to raise taxes. As an auditor, I would say the same thing. But auditors represent our town. We represent 25,000 residents. And that's what we have to do, is what's best for our residents. And in speaking with the auditors, with all due respect to them, they're not here tonight, uh, they would not have a problem with the budget that I'm proposing. I've done this almost as much as, or as long as committee person in Mancuso, and um, I would never recommend something that would be detrimental to any of us. I'm, I'm a taxpayer in town as well, and uh, we are all voted on here to do what's best for all of the residents. And this budget that I, that I propose um, does provide all of the services, protects us for the future, and lowers our taxes. And if I may add something to that, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Point being that um, this is the fifth year of uh, doing these budgets uh, since everything has turned where we're able to control what we're doing. Three of those years we came in with a flat budget and two of them we lowered the tax rate by one point. So I do think that we've been very, very fiscally responsible in doing what we've done. Thanks, sir. Very good. And just one last comment for myself. Uh, Morris Township has been able to retain a AAA bond rating, which is the highest bond rating, because we are able to uh, keep our debt in check. We are not raising our debt at all this year. Uh, we're paying off, we're taking on as much as we're paying off from last year. Uh, so debt is staying the same. And uh, I'm a firm believer in how I budget it at my house is to have a little bit of a rainy day fund in case you have an emergency. And uh, that's what we've done here. Um, we're keeping money in reserve in case we have an emergency. Um, and it'll be available for future use. And if we have a special project, maybe a senior center or, or being able to pave more roads. Um, but uh, I think it's very prudent the way we put together the budget. And just to Mr. Arbonidi's comment about um, future revenues from pilot programs or wherever the future revenues might come from, um, when those revenues do appear in the future, uh, we can re examine lowering the rate then. But 
I, I can't predict what's going to happen in the future, so I, I'd like to keep it the way it is right now. And if the time comes where we do have surplus based on tax revenues, that would be the time to lower the tax rate. But if I, if I may again, I'm sorry. Uh, with regard to our surpluses and money set aside for a rainy day, um, we have substantial surpluses. And with this budget here, we will replenish that surplus, just like I predicted last year that we would, and we exceeded the replenishing of what we used as surplus last year. And so uh, what I'm suggesting is that we more accurately reflect something like the collections that we have for our taxes, where we collect up to 99% but in our budget, we budget a little over 97%. So by just increasing that to 98.3%, going up 1%, that lowers our budget by over half a million dollars. So it doesn't affect surplus, it doesn't affect taking money away from a rainy day. Um, we're sitting on a substantial amount of money, which is the reason why we have our AAA rated bond, which is great, and that's a, a testament to previous administrations and how they did budget. But at some point, you have to say, when is enough enough with the type of surpluses that we're carrying? And there are other municipalities that actually run no surplus budgets. So I'm, I'm way on the other spectrum of that, because I'm not even touching any of our surplus with my recommendations of how we can lower taxes this year. It can be done, it's been done before, and it can be done again probably next year. If I may talk about the reserve for uncollected taxes, when yeah. we went through the... Uh, the, the hearing. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we have the hearing heard. next month. All right, well, um, let me just address this sorry. comment while we're sure. well, we here. It wasn't, it wasn't when Mr. Uh, when I'm he, sorry, sorry, if I mentioned uncollected, I meant the collection rates. Okay, well, okay. Uh, when we looked at the rate of uncollected taxes, we took $400,000 out of that last year to give you a one-point decrease. Well, when Mr. Grazel and I looked at it for the first time, he said, Where, where's that 400000 That's basically irreplaceable. So. As I say, let's leave it right this. We'll continue this next month. All right, so like I said, we're going to have a budget presentation in a month. Uh, you can see it will be a very interesting discussion. I hope all of you come back to hear it. There's going to be a lot of debate up here on the dais, which I think is a very good thing uh, to educate the public. Um, again, please come back uh, April 17th. Very good. So now I ask for a roll call. Very good. This is Amelia, roll call, please. No. Yes. 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 Thank you. Next on the agenda are resolutions 6119 through 7619. And tonight we did not have any additional resolutions coming out of our closed session, so that is all that we have to announce tonight. I'm going to ask you to eliminate the 6119 that's related to the Carter Road easement ordinance, which we also pulled. So we we'll revisit that on the 17th of April as well. Very good. So will somebody move 6219 through 7619, please? So we'll move. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. Second? Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call? Mr. Arby. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.